Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode number 81 of Preston Jensen's podcast. If you're new here, I'm your host, Preston. Tonight, we've got a very special guest. He's a content creator who does gear reviews, tutorials, and vlogs on his channel. And he also holds a weekly live stream about tech. Uh, our guest tonight, Paul Feinberg. Uh, thank you for being on the show tonight, Paul. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Paul is suffering from... Uh, back injury, and he's still willing to be on our show. So I want to send a special thank you for that. Hey, yeah, thanks, man. It's great to be here. Uh, yeah, love, love, love drone stuff. So, so we're all about this this channel right here. But uh, it's yeah, it's it's really, really awesome to be here. I love getting to chat with other creators. There's nothing is more encouraging when you, than when you get to sit down with other creators and just just see their and hear their story. So I'm I'm glad to be here. You know, that's one of the things I was going to ask you about, because when I look up your name on the internet and on YouTube, um, the common theme is you're one of the most supportive creators on the platform. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Are you a fan at heart too, or uh, how do you get that well, reputation? It, it really started there, um, honestly. Uh, my The reason, whole reason for me starting and wanting to do my own YouTube thing is I'm like, I was watching tons of creators. I spend... I still do spend probably way too much time watching creators, but I spent more time, uh, you know, doing my own stuff. But I just love engaging with people. I love, you know, encouraging everybody in their walk, uh, in their journey. Um, so, you know, I started off watching like DSLR video shooter, and I don't, I don't know why I'm a musician. Um, I play at church, and I was, you know, I volunt, I play, you know, live music out in like, you know, some restaurants occasionally, and and so. I have a big music background and I was starting to get into this itch for like something else that's creative, I guess. So I started watching like DSLR video shooter and seeing how he was like a super big Panasonic guy at the time. And I guess he probably still is, but um, anyway, so I, I started watching his stuff and, and uh, you know, I started getting a little bit into Casey nice at the time, but it was like way after he was like already huge. Like I think he already had snowboarded and did the big Christmas like thing where he snowed through this, through the city or whatever. But uh, you know, a lot of those just creators that were, have been around for a while. And I was like, well, maybe I should try to start doing this. So being the DSLR video shooter guy, uh, I was like, I should probably get a Panasonic. So I went out and, and told my wife like, Hey, honey, I want to get a, a camera. Yeah. We'll use it for family photography. Yeah. You know? And, um, and so, you know, I got the Panasonic G85 and gosh, the autofocus was so terrible, but it really did get me started i had it probably for a year before i even really started digging deep into it and then uh you know one of the creators i watched scott mckenna did a 30-day challenge and i said you know what i'm gonna do this 30-day challenge because it's gonna get me started and going and so um i was able to with a bunch of other creators say park uh, i'm not sure you know whom I, I met him through that challenge and then we actually got to meet in person when he flew down to orlando for a sony b alpha event and I fell in love with Sony cameras and I got to use it a seven three for the first time. I'm like, wow. So this is what autofocus is like, but anyway, so that's a, a pretty long story of how I originally got started. But yeah, I mean, I was comments. I love to comment on other creators uh, stuff. You know, I tried to, I mean, so, sometimes I watch a video and I don't comment, but a lot of the times, especially if they're small creators, like if I'm watching like a Maddie Hapoya video, I might not comment on every single one of the videos I watch from him or Peter McKinnon and all those big guys. But if I'm watching somebody like, you know, Sidney DeYoung's in, I always try to say, hey, man, I actually try to be the first person in his because he, he just gets he gets a kick out of it. And I, I'm, <laughs> you know, he's a good guy. I met him at Sony Camera Camp. Um, and it just, you know, I try to just encourage people, even these smaller channels, um, starting to get to know, like, uh, I think Gary Cantrell, who does, like, a little foodie channel, you know, it's interesting to see some of these different niches that are out there. Uh, and then I got the chance to, you know, uh, meet and um, work with Original Dobo from, uh, he does a lot of drone stuff, you probably know that. Um, and um, that was, he, he was, he taught me a little bit about, you know, just how to grind through content and a lot about thumbnails and and just his mind process behind some of the YouTube stuff. And I got to kind of assist him and make, try to help make some of his graphics a little better for his drone brew show. And he helped me be a producer. And that's really got really got comfortable doing live streams and, and just on the cuff, just flying and talking to people in the comments and, and stuff like that. And then, you know, now I got this 
guy that's out there what peter lindgren that like just like blew up i i remember watching his videos and encouraging him when he was like under a thousand subscribers i i kept telling him in the comments dude you're gonna blow up you're gonna blow up your stuff is amazing and like sure enough after one year what he's at almost like five hundred and forty thousand subscribers right now or something something crazy like that he's, i mean it's he's made it's it <laughs> He made it and then and 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 he and because of that relationship that i built with him when he was like smaller he already knew who i was and so he he messages me on instagram regularly he actually watches some of my videos and he'll be like hey this is you could improve this doing better that, that another great creator that is just huge but is just got a nice heart and um he messaged me the other day and was uh asking me about his vlogs i'm like dude you're, you're killing it with the vlogs man i don't you're like you're literally like the new age Casey Neistat, and he's and he's like, oh, you're being so too, too generous. I'm like, no, dude, you watch, you keep doing what you're doing on this on your vlog channel, and it's gonna just blow up. You're, I've said it right here, and I, you know, I sent him a little Instagram video of, of me just saying it, telling it to him, and he's, you know, just just a nice guy, and I, I love that he him, he him and I have that interaction as well. So it's I don't know, it's. Yeah, and, and you you said you know I got the thing of being about being a nice guy, and maybe it's it's as passed around to a lot of channels, and they just I'm I'm just I'm an encourager. I want to be an encourager. I want to lift people up, and I don't want to bring people down. And I think there's plenty of room for way more creators on YouTube that we don't need to like bump, uh, you know, be discouraging to anybody. We should always be encouraging because what helps you helps me in the end of the day, no matter how big or small you are. So I don't know. I, I know through this podcast, that's one of the things that just shocked me starting a podcast is how nice everybody is on the platform and how helpful people are. And that's my favorite part about YouTube. It's a awesome. It's an awesome community to be a part of. Community, man. Like I, I it's funny the the relationship that Kyle Watts and I built. You know, you had him on right. guest a, a little bit, a few episodes ago, and that's kind of yep. how we how we kind of first yes. interacted. Like I just how I met him is I started, I saw him, one of his videos, I don't know how I came, oh, he was this charging wall. I was thinking about building one for my studio and I found it and I'm like, this guy has like under a hundred subscribers. How is that possible? This guy's amazing. And of course, I just happened to find one of his first videos. So I, you know, of course, being me, I encouraging him all the way. We started talking somehow. We, I, we traded phone numbers and then my wife calls him, you know, like my, 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 my secret lover or my boyfriend or something <laughs> like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, we he should be like, who? And my text goes off, you know, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night, and dead. <laughs> who is it? Is it Kyle? Uh, yeah, yeah, honey, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just it's cool, and like you know, and it's weird. You know, like my, my wife's like, you're weird. You make friends like on. It's like you're online dating, like finding friends. But it's it's like, it's hard to find creatives like in your area, like. You know, I met, I have one guy that's subscribed to my channel that I know lives in my area. Uh, his name is Steve. And I really want to meet the guy that haven't got around to it yet with all the back issues and just the busy schedule. And we, I got kids, he's got kids, but so we haven't had a chance to just link up yet. But man, like it's hard to find your people that are like minded. And then until you go into like one of these like big, you know, I'd, I'd love to do like a community event. There was like a Facebook group from Central Florida, but I haven't yet got a chance to meet a lot of people in it yet. But Anyway, I, I just, I love meeting new people and it's like, you know, just every, like you said, everybody on YouTube is so kind and, and you meet these people. Like I went to camera camp and you, I met like city de Young's and, uh, Ryan, you know, uh, Ryan, oh gosh, I'm now in his my, mind, the last name's blank. Anyway, Ka Ka Ko, Ka I, I, I'm terrible with names, uh, Mondo Bites, Armando from, uh, you know, Mondo Bites, that guy is super nice, uh. Him and I were talking about gimbals, and he's like, "Oh, you here? This is how heavy the Ronin is." I'm like, "Wow, you, know, you, you, you want to come over here and get a drink?" And you know, we just, I mean, it's just super nice. And then you had, get, got Gerald undone in the corner on a, you know, kind of he trying to be the introvert guy that he really is. It's it, he, was, he could tell he was a little like out of his element there with all those cre different creators there. And it's like, "Hey, man, what's up?" And then you're like, "Wow, you're really tall." Like, yeah, uh, <laughs> um, but I mean, just. All of them, they were so nice. Chris and Becky, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, right. oh, I walk to the gear vault and I, they're in there like looking at the different things, what they're going to check out for the day. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, and she, you know, you know Becky's just like, I, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's, it was, it was so surreal and crazy. I met Jason Vong, just a super nice guy too. You know, uh, him and Vivian are just, you know, nice. And um, yeah, just, man, they're, all the creators were very helpful. iPhone though, that guy is hilarious and 
man, he was, he was fun. We did a scavenger hunt and he was just a fun dude to work with, but just, gosh, all these people who have like huge channels, you just realize when you meet them, they're just like you and me, they're down to earth people. They're just trying to create fun stuff and, and go out there and, and do their thing and do something they love. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with doing something that you love, like YouTube, even when you're, when you're getting paid to do it or when you're not getting paid to do it. So I don't know. I just love it. That's fantastic. So a camp like that Sony camp, is that something you get invited to or how is that a yearly thing? Well, they've only done it once and they did and, and they did it, of course, the year before COVID hit. So okay. they were I'm, I'm assuming they wanted to do it again, but just because of everything, they haven't done it since. Um I was lucky enough to build I guess being the nice guy I am, I saw I somehow built a relationship with one of the guys at the Sony um, B Alpha event down here in Orlando, um, and I, you know, messaged him. He's a Sony ambassador, and I found out he does a lot of the Sony events, and he owns a coffee shop here in Orlando. And um, I was just messaging him back and forth with IG, and like thanking him, asking him questions about Sony stuff, and saying, "Hey, I really love that Sony Alpha event in Orlando. When are we gonna do some more stuff?" Anyway, so I see that Jenna, um, uh, what, uh, one of the one of the big YouTubers, um, goodness. I Jenna Jenna I Jenna what I Justine oh. I Justine so okay. I Justine she's the one that had this like big thought of getting all these creators together at a camp and she got she was able to convince Sony to kind of uh, be the forerunner of the, of the event and then get all these other you know vendors to help sponsor it as well but she was pushing it made the video for it and they said they're going to pick a hundred YouTubers that were not big ones but small ones and so I'm thinking like oh man. They, so what they did is they brought all the big ones in for the whole weekend and they brought us in for like one day. So they brought a hundred like small, you know, they didn't like fly us in. We had to pay our own like plane ticket and stay, but they, but the event itself for the day for us to get there was free. And I'm like, I don't care. I'll pay whatever I want to go. I want to meet these people. I want to hang out with some people. I want to, you know, I want to pick the brains of these people who have been doing it for a long time and just have fun shooting and meeting with other people. So I met, uh, Mike from Unbox Warehouse there. I don't know if you who know who he is. He does like a pretty much an unboxing channel. Um, he's like at 50,000 subscribers. So he was a nice guy. And he had, had this little like uh, suitcase. It was like following him around because he's a you know unboxing channel. And they, this company sent him like a suitcase that like follows you. To, so you don't have to like pull it down the airport. It's just supposed to like track you. And, and anyway, so he was running in the parking lot, running circles as this suitcase is like chase, chasing him. And he, he made it look like the suitcase was trying, you know, running after him or whatever so that guy was nice and he ended up being in my group for the scavenger hunt so he and he was a funny dude um still have a good relationship with him too um but yeah they, so they brought all these creators together and and um uh they haven't done it since like everybody had a really great vibes of it i got oh so anyway i got lucky enough i applied for it and then um i i got in and, and they i got the accepted email i'm like no way i got i got accepted you know I, I think at the time i was like i don't know 100 200 subscribers i wasn't i wasn't super big maybe three i don't know i can't remember and um so i messaged the guy you know messaged the guy dude i got into the sony event <laughs> camera camp are you going to be doing the event and he's like yes i know i put i i put your name in the hat for it I'm like, <laughs> Thank you. You know, so, <laughs> so anyway, so my buddy Say Park and I, we got into that event. And so we, we shared a room in a hotel together to make it cheaper for both of us. And then we, um, uh, we rented a car together and we split everything that, that was kind of what held, we went, we went, we went to, um, Montana, Montana. It was beautiful out there in the mountains. Interesting. And, and the, it was on yeah. ranch. They pretty much rented out a big dude ranch and had us up there and, it was a really great experience. I mean, everybody knows if you watch my channel enough that I have like a, this like secret obsession with camera camp. I would, and Kyle and I really, really want to like do another one of those of our, so we we're, we're trying to brand our new live stream, uh, uh, to be creator, uh, creator camp. So where we kind of have a guest in and maybe not necessarily talk about cameras or their channel, but we talk more about, them and getting to them, know them more as a person and more as a creator than again you know, most of these live streams they bring in and they how did you start your youtube channel how you know how did you do all this but we want to do something more personal like you're talking around a campfire that's kind of what we kind of thought that's how we kind of got to the camp thing and then we're like but it would be cool to do a, a camp too like eventually where we could hey we're gonna round this place and everybody can you know get a ticket and we can just all film and have some special you know 
set thing set up. I don't know. It would, be, it would be really cool to do like a Sony camera camp with like everybody, every normal day people or whoever wants to come big people too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. Uh, so I have a, my, my, if you watch my channel, I'm like obsessed with camera camp and I have a hashtag one time at camera camp. Cause you know, Oh yeah. That's what everybody yep. says when I start, when I start talking about, Oh, there goes Paul one time at camera camp. You know, so that's kind of how that kind of started. Uh, well, sounds like a fantastic you know, idea. I mean, it's, I, I'm sure there'd be a lot of interest around the community. I mean, it, yeah, especially now after, I mean, we talked to like people like Chris Brockhurst and, you know, Sydney DeYoung's in and they're just, it's there. You can tell they're itching to just get out there and, and create with other people everybody that you talk to that went to camera camp is missing it everybody who didn't get invited to camera camp like probably a lot of the canadian guys they just didn't want to fly them down i guess i don't know but um they are they're all itching to get together too so there's there's a lot of people who are itching to get together and and do something like this i don't know how i don't know how we could pull it off it would be really cool just to do a just a huge even bigger than what can sony camera camp was and and the only thing i didn't like about the camera camp is i felt like they secluded the big creators. Um, so by the time we got there, the small creators, the other creators have already been there for like two days and they've already gone out and they went to National Glacier Park and shot together. And so we're okay. like coming in here and the security guards are the front door. It's not open yet until nine o'clock. We can't let you in. We got to wait for the bus to leave for the other big creators. Wait, the other mm -hmm. creators are leaving and we're just now getting here, you know? So it was it was almost like they, it was secluded until the nighttime. They like, so they had the day planned for us and they took the big creators out to do something. And then at nighttime, we got to eat dinner, dinner with them. Like they had like the little bar open. So we got to have some drinks before dinner, eat dinner with them. And then we just kind of got to mingle and they had some, a few classes uh, that a, a few of the big creators were like, you know, like, youtube struggles and that was really cool and we kind of sat around in the main lobby and on couches and we just got to hear these stories of like these big creators that have you know three hundred thousand subscribers and how they, the the things they struggled struggled with is the same thing that you and i have struggled with, with as small people where they you know their parents and friends are like making fun of them because they're oh you're a youtuber right you're, you're never going to make anything get off you know stop work you know make go out there and make something of yourself stop working at the grocery store and and doing this YouTube thing and go out and, and now, you know, they're doing what they love full time. And so I, you know, the, the, the sky is the limits for you. You could put your heart and mind to it, you know, like, just like my favorite movie, back to the future, put your mind to it. You can accomplish anything, you know? So, well, actually I don't know. I haven't seen back to the future. And what? Yeah, I know. Can you believe it? Uh, and if I have seen it, it's just been pieces at a time. So one of my homework assignments is definitely to watch, sit down and watch it from start to finish because I know Kyle is a big Back to the Future fan as well. And I I, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in that one, but uh, I cannot uh, think of a time when I sat down and actually watched it from beginning to end. So oh I've, I've seen bits and pieces of right, it. Right, because it's always uh, on TV, so you right. maybe have to yeah. a little bit. Of it. But uh, so I, def I have to sit down and... Uh, take the time to actually watch it. And that's, it's like, uh, one of my favorite show, shows now, the office, I kept telling myself, no, nah, I don't want to get into that. It doesn't look like something I'll like. <laughs> I sat true. down and watched one episode and then it's just like, I am sucked in. It's oh, uh, fanta yeah. fantastic. And the Back to the Future series is great. Cause like you, the, I, I would say the only good thing of it, you never have seen it before is now you can sit down and watch one, two and three back to back, like one just big long movie and see, I mean, I I used to be, I used to like love part two the best, and now I think it just goes in order for me one, two, and three. I just I, I don't know. I, I like it, it. I feel like it's one gigantic movie now, and it's I don't know. It's it's great. I love, especially when he gets oh, part two is is great when he gets to go. You see the clips from the first movie, and oh, I gotta ask you this movie. because every time I see a movie that I love. I think, oh, man, I wish I hadn't seen that yet because it's so much better watching it the first time. <laughs> so so in a way, it's like, oh, I'm kind of saving these classics because, man, it's going to be awesome to watch them for the first time, you know, and then after it. But it sounds like you rewatch it several times. So, uh, Well, the sad part is if you gave me enough time right now, I could probably definitely for part one and pretty close to part two, probably – 
start in my mind and quote every single thing of the movie in order. Like if I was watching wow. the movie right now, I could, I could probably quote. I could quote literally. I mean, it's weird. I mean, I don't know. I've how many, watched how many times do you think you've seen that? <sighs> Way too many. I don't know. I have no. I I don't know. Over like or under hundreds, a thousand. Hundreds. Of, I mean, so when I was a kid, my dad recorded them those movies, and I loved them as a kid. I love so that that's another part. When you watch things as a kid, it's like you kind of retain a lot of things. It's weird. Like I, you know, I used to listen to like Reliant K when I was a kid all the time in high school there was like the, that was like the big music and i haven't listened to that music in a really long time but if you take me to like you know i'm pressing on or one of those one of their old classics you know they even have a song about back to the future that's how awesome they are but wow. um i wish i was michael j fox and take me to back to the future uh, it, it was a good one um anyway so but the, but they if i could i could quote this you know i can sing along those songs you know and have and still have all those you know lyrics in my mind but i haven't listened to it in you know, forever. So same thing with the back to the future. I could sit down and watch a movie and it's like, I could just, everything just go, comes back. Just quote it. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. See, when I, I was I little the uh, soundtracks of back to the future. And yep. what I would do is I put them in my car and I'd be like, you, it would, you would be like, Oh, this is the sound. This is the, the music that's going on in this part of the movie. And I would try to like quote the lines of the movie over top of all the music. Just to, I, I don't know. It was crazy. I'm, cra I'm crazy. I love back to the future. It's a good movie. See, when I was little, I watched a movie over and over again called Iron Will. I don't know if many people have ever yes. even seen that one, the dog sledding one. Yeah. You've seen it. Okay, good. Yeah. See, a, a lot of times I bring it up and people are like, oh, I never really heard of that one. <laughs> but, but, uh, that was, uh, um, uh, Matt, uh, Matt, who's Matt, Matt Dillon, Matthew Dillon. Is that the main character? Uh, I don't, I'm not good with actors either. So I, okay. I'm not sure. I, I think it's a Disney movie though. I think it's technically a Disney movie, but uh, yeah, I'm not not too sure. But it's an I'm older I'm dog pretty sledding. Sure. I'm pretty sure I'm right, but let me see. Oh nope, you're right. I'm, I'm wrong. He, the guy looks very similar to him. Nope, it wasn't that guy. But yeah, yeah, I have seen this movie. That, you that have was seen it. Thing. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's the one. When I was little, I thought, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. I mean, uh, at the end, my, went... my wife loves dog movies, so I know she. I okay. Guess she Seen it, so. so you've probably seen that several times as well. I've seen it a few times. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I do have to say that when I was at Universal Studios, I did see the car from Back to the Future. They, they well, had or a replica of it. You obviously haven't been to Universal Studios in the early days when they had the. Oh, my gosh. That when they when they announced that they were replacing Back to the Future of the Ride with The Simpsons, I was very, very Oh, sad. so that's what that's what was before The Simpsons, huh? Before The Simpsons. They had a Back to the Future. Back to the Future of the Ride. And when I was in fifth grade, um, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I've been there before. I, I can't remember the last time I was, how, I can't remember how old I was when the last time I wrote it was, but I remember when, when I was in fifth grade, was that was like our big field trip to Universal Studios. And um, my, my nana, or my grandmother, she was... Uh, a chaperone with us and my gramps worked for AT&T at the time and AT&T sponsored the ET ride and so we would get to go like it's it, they had this like special like if AT&T employees can go into this room watch the pre-show movie for ET while you get to, uh, to get to drink some free fountain drinks and then they take you straight to the front of the ride and you get to ride it but then it's it was literally right next to back feature and we would just go over there and Man, I loved I loved Back to the Future the Ride. It was and it was cool. If you could you could still go on YouTube and see kind of the premise of the ride. Like they still have that pre-show and you can watch the whole ride of what it looked like. If, if you have the DVDs or the Blu-rays of Back to the Future, you could actually there there's a, a, a like a ride like the ride whole the whole ride on the Blu-ray, so you could actually see what the ride was. At least a story behind it. You can't obviously you can't feel how cool it was, but to be like feel like you're in a flying DeLorean. But it was it was. It was really cool. It was I'll a great have to check I out that video. Uh, you know, one of the things that I thought was weird is I really liked the ET ride, and I felt like that was it, it's got to be the oldest ride there at this it's point. It's still and it's still there. It's, it's still, still there. And I, and I think yep. <laughs> part of it is that Steven Spielberg is like, you're never getting rid of that ride. You know, like, mm -hmm. and it's just nostalgia too. Like, I don't know about you, I love the smell inside the forest of ET. So I've, and I've my wife, old, my wife only been crazy. there twice. 
you, you've only been there twice and you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. And because the first time I went, um, I said to my wife, um, when we went the second time, I said, you have to go on this ET ride. Uh, <laughs> there's just something about it. That's so cool. I said, when you get there, you might be like, Oh, this is it. But the, the line leading into it, and I think, like you said, it's just nostalgic just because it's so old school. It doesn't really feel like it should be part of the new Universal Studios, but right. but it's pretty but neat. It, and, and the funny part is, like, when I was a kid, I felt like you were going so fast on those bikes. And now yeah. you're like, <laughs> hey, watch you. Watch out. Woo! You know, and, like, you could hear, like, a, doom, doom. And it, it's, it's going so slow when you're riding on the bikes. But when I was a kid, I felt like, Oh my gosh! When that when that jeep was pulling out of the forest, I thought it was gonna hit me. But now you're like, hey, look, there's a jeep coming out. You know, you could like, it's, it's like it's like going in slow motion. But when you're young and you, it, everything, I guess, seems faster. I don't know, but um, the the smell in there. Um, I found a website, ParkSense.com, that sells these like spray bottles of the ET scent, and I spray it in my office at work. Um, and I even have. <laughs> These little, this little oil, this oil, um, the oil stuff that, you know, that vaporizes and then has the scent in there. So I got little oil things of that, that same scent and kids will come in. I work in a school doing it. So they occasionally come into my office throughout the day and having issues or need their device replaced because they threw it on the ground and broke it or something. And, um, they'll be like, they'll, every once in a while, a kid will be like, man, I come in here cause it smells so good in here. I'm like, and every time I'm like, so what do you think this room smells like? And they're like. I don't know. It smells like, I don't know, maybe like pine, uh, uh, a four. I don't know. I can't tell. I'm like, you're really close, buddy. Do you know what? And, and I'll, then I'll take out the spray and I'll be like, ET scent. And they're like, <laughs> wow, that it does smell like that. You know, <laughs> it's funny. See, uh, that is amazing to me that they actually bottle up the scent. So they must be, they must have that scent and they must be diffusing it as the day goes on. Well, I mean, uh, the everybody it's like the big mystery for a long time i tried to figure out who was who made like there's a company that makes it for universal and they just spray it in there obviously probably through like the the ac system or something but this company parksense.com they, they've manufactured like et uh pirates of the caribbean um, the haunted mansion like all these different rides that you would go on that have you know very distinct smells and uh they they Rep- replicate these things pretty close so i guess i'm just doing a, a little advertisement for park sense but no well, um, that, I that's really amazing like ET, so. <laughs> that's amazing to me because i never even thought of that you know i went to the park twice i never even realized that hey this isn't a scent being distributed in here i just thought oh this is just what this these sets or whatever have to smell like you know so i i didn't know they were actually using specific scents but uh if you, uh, I mean, their marketing teams are probably like, Hey, we get this many more people to go on this ride because it smells so good. So, uh, <laughs> I, I'll have to look that know, up. All these parks, everything is about the experience. They want you to actually feel like you are where you are. And I don't know. I, I don't think they're necessarily trying to market it. So to speak, like you're going to walk out there and say, oh, I want to, I want to buy that smell, but mm-hmm. they just, they want to make it, you walk into these atmospheres and feel like you're there so like there, there's something about the et ride where you walk in there and it legitimately sounds, smells like you're in like a in the big you know forest in california the you know with all these big oaks and and the, and the smell is definitely a part of that to make you you know all your senses feel like you're there and i don't know anyway we got way we got way off topic with that but uh way, I, way off kind of, topic you know, but very interesting it's <laughs> um well, I, I don't want to keep you too much longer just because I know your back is probably killing you. So um, let's let's get right. In. I feel great right now. So you're feeling yeah, good. I mean, okay. We, we, we should get into some question, other questions that you might yep. want to answer outside of the Back to the Future and ET realm, I guess. That's <laughs> right. Uh, one of the things I did want to talk to you about is live streaming. And that is uh, how long did that take to get used to? Because it sounds like you had a little taste with the lit- original Dobo. Is that where you yeah. started live streaming, or did you do live streaming before that opportunity? Only a handful of times. So, okay, you know, especially being even being like a thousand subscribers channel, not very many. It's it's really hard to live stream on a small channel. But 
the way I view it in the way that Kyle and I have talked about it is like, you know what? Let's just, I love talking to people, love having fun. If there's two people in the room, zero people in the room, Kyle and I are still going to have a good conversation. And then when people join us and go into the live stream, they get very like personal attention. Like the nice thing about being a small channel is if any of your subscribers join on the live stream, they're getting like way, way, way personal attention because if you're like one or two people in there, you can get any of your questions answered or you, or you can be as involved in the conversation as you want to be. So anyway, I think it's really cool. And it's, even though we're small channels, it's still great to just do it. And then it goes up live and people can watch it after if they really want to. But what really started, I did it a few times with Say Park in our 30 day challenge. We kind of used a few live streams to be kind of like our one of our videos for our 30 or 30 day challenge and it was cool i love like i said it the part that i love about it is i'm able to talk to like you and other people that live in other states that i can't necessarily sit down and talk to in person um unless i wanted to like call you up on and do like a facetime or something like that but what's cool is you and i can talk and then we can even send it out to other people and they can be able to hear that conversation and learn something else from it whatever but um so i did that when I was just starting out a few times, but when I went, yes, when I really started to learn how to like, you know, feel super comfortable um, doing it. Um, and the, 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 I think the biggest thing about live streaming and is kind of, it's different. It's different than recording of camera. You know, I can, I know how to talk to the camera. I know how to like, you know, keep my focus on the camera. It's not weird for me talking to the camera. It's not weird for me talking by myself in a room, but now you know i'm talking to you through the camera and it's 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 just another different experience it's weird i got i'm talking to a real person and you're you're on the other side of this as well as other people that i can't see um and it is live and there are people that are interacting with it at this time it's just something it's just something, and then you gotta like you know just learn how to kind of flow with the questions and really be yourself you know really learn how to just be yourself and be goofy and talk about back to the future and et sense and you know what right. you know what <laughs> so when we were doing the, the live stream people i think that's why people, some people connected with me for on, on the adobo on the adobo stream because they I, I was like on the if, if you have a yin yang is what adobo and i used to say he's like the yin and i'm like the yang we were like kind of on two opposites he was very you know outgoing very he'll he's you know he'll tell you his opinion and then i'm like the nice guy on the other on the, on the other corner like hey guys we you know we're we all gotta love each other and and dobo's like i don't care this is how i feel you know so yep, I mean, right he's a super nice guy but he he is not afraid to tell you how he feels um about certain topics and i think people connected with with me because i was so like and then i'd be kind of goofy about it like uh, yeah and then some people thought that we were like planning some of the stuff out and it was we we did not we didn't plan i mean we we could have done better planning things out and maybe we could have even made it even funnier if we were we were planning things out but we would just go off the cuff on on, on, on some of these things and uh and that's where i really learned how to like do these live streams and just be i want to be real with you know i want to be real in my right. youtube videos i want to be real in the live streams like i don't want to be like this is not a this is not a reality this is like a real reality TV show that's not planned. <laughs> I have a friend that works for uh, shoots for reality TV shows, and he he's, he told me he's like, he'd be surprised on how much unreality those reality TV shows really are as as a as a guy that's walking around filming these things. And <laughs> yep, and <laughs> I think that's what draw, as a fan, that's what draws me into live streams is because it seems a lot more personable, and it seems like people are more themselves than when they're doing a finished product where they can do editing and whatnot. Uh, exactly. Is there yeah. has there been any times where you you've been uh, on the live stream and you thought oh, I wish I could have cut that out or anything like that? I mean, I did a lot of you know I don't know I ate the microphone a few times and and then people started wanting me to do it like they're like they're like you should do that I'm like oh that was that was actually that looked kind of disgusting I shouldn't do that again <laughs> yeah. like, just do it do it you know um, but uh, I don't know. It, there's there's sometimes though when especially with dobo stuff and, and it's hard to hide when you're when you're doing a live stream it's hard to hide when you're when you're just like i don't know what we're talking about here so you know he would be going into fpv stuff and i'm not super inclined with fpv so i mean i've learned a lot 
since helping him and being on his on his 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 little stream there but like you know when they first started talking about uh air chips and and uh all these other stuff about building the fpv engine i'm thinking like uh-huh yeah <laughs> yeah that's so cool man i have no idea what he's talking about no but <laughs> you know it, it, it's hard to hide that stuff when you're doing a live stream and um I think Dobo Dobo saw how passionate I am about like Sony cameras and um, and I did a, whenever he would close the stream down one night I'd be like all right I'm gonna go out and do my own live stream uh, on Sony cameras just because I I want I love talking about gear and cameras I'm a gearhead so and I like interacting with people so I'm gonna try to do this thing and so then once I started doing that he's like hey I think you should branch off and do your own thing and he's like it's about time for you to spread your wings and fly and do your own channel and uh, He's like, I've appreciated you, but it'll be better for the book. I think it, it was better for the both of us because, you know, he got somebody that knows more about these because he started going. When I was starting with him, I was in the GPS drones. Yep. But I had, I'm not anything about, you know, uh, FP. I would love, I wish I could. He let me fly one one time and I, I think it lasted like 60 seconds and that thing was <laughs> gone. That's pretty uh, good because that is a challenging thing to do. I, I'm uh, actually yes. myself not into FPV, but uh, actually my father-in-law, um, way before, you know, right when like the Mavic, or not even the Mavic, it was the Phantom was coming mm. out. He got that and he loved it so much. And then he started building his own uh, little drones out of like uh, plywood and stuff like that. And wow. he was doing this way back. And then the regulations came out where they wanted you a part 107 and stuff. And then that just kind of ruined it for him. And he hasn't been doing it since. So it's kind of a bummer because what's that? Do you have your part 107? Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah. I have a drone business uh, on the side and uh, oh, okay. I have my part 107 and uh, yeah, it's I am been, studying for that right now. And it is no joke. Like it's, ugh. it's no joke. And you know, there's not too many things that really pertain to actual flying of a drone. It's a lot more on airspace and uh, stuff like that. The weather um, taft charts have been just really fr and then right when I think I'm getting them, I take too much time off between studying and I, so now I pretty much got a I got the remote pilot 101 I paid for the, the whole class and I've taken every single class I've watched every video but now I got to go back I've, it, I've ta I took too long to try to refresh and I, I think I took the test the first time I took the test the practice test I got a 70 on it um, and they say that you know for the remote pilot 101 they say for you to feel like super comfortable you need to get an 80 but you should really get higher because you know yep a lot of these questions are the same things you've seen in the videos so um yeah so i'm, I'm i need to go back and and redo those but i i want to i need to get it there's so many people that have, have been asking me like real estate agents that want me to shoot stuff and i'm like right you can't you can't i can't for you and please don't when if you do hire somebody make sure they have their 107 because you can be fined a lot of money yeah so yep and a lot of people just don't know that they're not educated enough these real estate agents are just like oh you shoot fit photos well great let's you know come out here and shoot for me and they don't yep. even they don't even, they don't even know and they could you know the chances of them getting caught i guess are very slim it seems but but you don't want to um, take that risk i wouldn't, want to, risk. I wouldn't no. want to take the risk if it was my business and those fines are are no joke so and uh, that's actually how I got into uh, drones is my brother is a real estate broker uh, for uh, Remax now in Valley City and Jamestown. It's a neighboring okay. city. And uh, he was looking for someone who was licensed. And I said, you know what? I'm really into tech. I like that kind of stuff. Uh, I like <laughs> drones. So I can study up and get the part 107. And uh, now it's a couple years later and I'm doing podcasting and all this other stuff because of that. And it's, right. uh, it's, it's been a fun thing. Um, of what drone do you fly on? Just curious. Uh, actually right now I fly the Mavic to zoom and I really like that super resolution feature on it. Um, cool. Because I actually take multiple super resolution photos. And basically what that is, if you're not familiar with that, it uses that zoom to get it, it kind of, um, take Almost several like pictures. Yes, except it's one photo. Anyway, I take right. several of those of the same location, and then I stitch all those together after the oh, fact. Oh, so you do like an HDR, like uh, you, yes, you, yep. you do the 
bracketing shots and you do like overexpose, mm. underexpose and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so I, I take all these photos and just mash them together and then they can get high resolution. So it's, uh, that's just kind of fun for me. It's, it's been a fun hobby and, uh, um, yeah, actually, yeah, I have um, Evo. I have the Evo 8K right now. That's all I have. Uh, I used to okay. have the Mavic Pro, but I crashed it and broke it, and and I tried to repair the the gimbal, and it it, it flew. It flies still, and sometimes it gets a gimbal error. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, my father in law was like, "I want a drone so bad." I'm like, "Well, here, here, take this Mavic. It works most of the time, but you could, for for all you want to do, you just want to fly it around the." around the neighborhood and just have fun with it. So I, I gave it to him and, and now I just keep the, 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 the Evo. I, I, it takes some pretty good shots. The 8k kills the computer, but, um, <laughs> uh, other than, I mean, it, the, uh, the images look pretty good for the sensor size, you know, probably the same sensor size. It's the same sensor size as the zoom. And, um, I don't know, I haven't really needed anything else. And every, all the, you know, every time I shoot a photo for somebody, they, they're like, wow, that looks great. You know? So, I just need to get that dang part one on seven. That's I think that's the that's the biggest thing holding me back. And so well, you're on the right path. I actually did the part or that uh, remote pilot one hundred and one as well, and I feel like that gave me a great foundation going into the test. And they go over everything that's on it. I mean, now now tell me this: since you take the test, do and when you're taking the remote pilot one hundred and one class, like this question is going to be on the te- yep. it's not really the 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 question verbatim it's just the very the close numbers or whatever they're close if, if it's not um i mean they do a great job of going through uh the test questions and then uh, when you get to the test uh if it's you you know it's not like the exact same locations and stuff like that but you've got right. the concept down and so you'll know um You'll have the me, right foundation the, the, to take the, the test. Part for me is the sectional charts. Those things, right. that's easy. I feel like every, yep. all the information is there right for you. All you got to do is know how to read the longitude and latitude and, and those 60 degree, you know, you yep. know, pretty much like, you know, 10 increments, right? So I, I think that, that that part is easy. I, I get that part really well. It's just uh, the part that hangs me up is, and I get all, I mean, I know most of the crazy, you know, uh, 400, you know, AGL, you can yep. fly you know, over top of a, you know, skyscraper and all that stuff. But the part that really gets me is the weather. And those questions were like, an airplane is landing. Uh, you're, you're on the radio when you hear an airplane saying they're flying in southeast, west from blah, 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 blah. Where are they located on the sectional chart? And you're like, yep. And I world? guess I mean, uh, the best advice I can give you there is draw it out. Because just take it step by step and draw it out. And then when you're done drawing it out, it'll all make sense. So if you just take your time a little bit, make a little drawing of what they're telling you, I think you'll have no problem on it. And uh, the good news also is that after you pass that first test, now you're able to take the recurrent test all online. online. Ready to go back in person, yeah. <laughs> so I've already actually taken the I took the original test. I went back to the testing center. I took that test. Now I've done the online test. So I've already taken it three times. And wow. uh, and uh, it is extremely nice to have the online option because, uh, number one, it saves you money. Number two, it saves you a bunch of time. You don't have to schedule a time to go to a testing center. Right. And, uh, and there's, on that online test too, they go over all the stuff before you take the test and the test right. is um, a lot different than the initial. So uh, good news. And once you know, pass it, then before they start adding all those like others, they're, they're about, I'm sure they're going to about to add all that. What the uh, remote ID stuff. Remote ID. Really yep. This big test before they cram a bunch of other new stuff down our throats, you know? Yep. I'd say keep taking those practice tests and, uh, You'll get it. I'm uh, I'm quite sure you'll get it because uh, that uh, study material that they have is taking you through the the test step by step. Yeah, yeah. I'm. That's my New Year's resolution this year. I'm totally gonna get it. Some I I need to need to take that test. Have you scheduled it yet? No. At a testing center. That's another thing that. If I I guess if I scheduled it, it would force me to have to do it, right? 
Yep. That's the one thing I did is I started, uh, started the study material. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to schedule this test. So I just get this done. And once you have the pressure of knowing, yeah, I'm going to pay this amount of money, I'm going to be going to a testing center. Um, now doesn't remote pilot 101 say that if you fail it and you took their course and passed it, that you, you're, they're guaranteeing you that you're going to pass it or your money back essentially. I'm, I'm pretty sure they did do something like that. I, uh, I didn't look yeah. into it. I mean, it I, I hope I don't have to use it, but yeah, I don't, uh, yeah. I don't think you'll have to worry about that. If you just keep going through the test, uh, uh I'm trying to think of the guy's name. Is it Jason Shepard? Yep. Is it, is it yep. like Shepard on the Shepard? Yep. 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 He does a very good job. And, uh, and then also it, it seems like they keep adding more material for the recurrent test and, uh, how many things are available for you online to study right now? Is it the recurrent test on there too? Yes. Yes, yep. he does. The nice thing about that is you, when you join up, you get pretty much membership for life. And that yep. whenever they add new stuff, you can always go back and watch all the new stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's all on there. They have a practice. I think they have a few different practice tests you can take built into it. And then of course, being the person I am, I'm going to go, there's a, a few other websites too that, do a lot of practice questions and I'm just going to, I'm going to take when I get, when I pass the remote, 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 remote 101 one, I'll go take a few more and just to make sure that I didn't just memorize the remote 101 stuff. <laughs> yep. And then, yeah, I, and, I, uh, did the same thing. I think, uh, at the time, I don't know if they still have a practice practice test, but 3DR robotics. I don't know if you've heard of that. No, I haven't the, heard of them. No. At the time they had the solo drone and that was a consumer drone. I think they've kind of, switched gears and kind of went into more commercial stuff, but, uh, they had a good practice test on their website. And then, uh, yeah, there's a few others out there that, uh, were the, good. The FAA for, also has a practice test on there for, you know, for yep. as well. So yep. yeah, I just got to get it. And everybody needs, us, if you're interested in flying drones, you got to get it. Cause the opportunity is endless once you get it, you know, like you and said, I've, you're able to do real estate stuff and Yep. I feel like with the emergence of remote ID, I think it's going to be more essential to have that part 107. I think they're going to start cracking down on people just flying for fun or whatever uh, in the right. future. So it's, it's a good thing to get. And uh, the main thing is after you're done studying, you feel so much more confident uh, flying in the airspace. You know, you're allowed to be flying where you're flying you know the rules. Oh, right. You don't have to worry about somebody coming up to you and saying, "Hey, you're not allowed to fly here." Actually, yes, yep. And uh, my card, I know more than you do about this. Yep. You don't own airspace. The FAA does. Thank you, but <laughs> yep, exactly. And that's uh, it's just it comes with a great peace of mind once you get it. So uh, right. you have to let me know when you get it, and you have to let me know what you think of the actual test when you get there. For sure. I mean, I you know I, I always wanted to do a video. Like I'm probably going to do a video on it right when I get out of the test, just initial thoughts, like pull up, have my camera ready to go and just go, this is what I thought. Boom. Cause I, I think I, I I'm always interested to see what p people think when they get out of that test. Cause I mean, you're studying for it and you're like, man, there's you're cramming and in there, there's so much in the test and mm -hmm. you, you know, I don't know. I want to, I want to be able to like exhale a little bit of how I felt, you know, coming out of the test and, you know, hopefully I come out with a test, but I made it. What would you, would you pass your test with? You know what? Time? Um, I wish I had, I had my folder down here. I, I could tell you, cause I've got both of my recurrent and my uh, first one saved in there, but I don't have that right now, but it was good. So I, I can say, you, you have, I think you have to get a 70, right? You have to get a 70 out of the hundred and, 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 you know, I think that's what you have to do to pass. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was really happy with how I did. Uh, yeah, I think I located the binder. So maybe next question, <laughs> I'll look it up here and let you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I felt very confident going in with the study material, uh, that remote pilot one one provided. Hey, you know, well, we're both wearing Minnesota hats. I know it's a little, you know, Hey, nice. <laughs> yeah, this is, yep. Uh, North this shore. My, uh, yeah, we went, when uh, I went to visit Kyle Watts over there, right. You know, uh, it'd be too bad. We couldn't have met up when we were there during that time. That'd but, have been yeah. awesome. Um, we went to North shore and this is like a little souvenir, but yeah, uh, it was so beautiful over there. I, I don't know. How, how far are you from Kyle? Do you know? 
Uh, I'm about four hours from Kyle, uh, four or five oh, wow. hours from Minneapolis, and then uh, in North Shore is that much farther too. Is, I think it's about five hours from Minneapolis. Is that correct? Uh, it was three hours. Three uh, hours. Okay. Right. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that uh, I'm trying to find my test scores here. <laughs> um, let's see here. Ninety-five percent. Wow. So, uh, wow. yeah, I was pretty, pretty happy with that. So I, I, I even think you know, I, for me, I, I think I might've, I got a 70, but, uh, I, yeah, getting a 95, that's really good. I think I might've even emailed uh, remote pilot one one thanking them for the great study material, <laughs> if I remember right. But that was quite a while ago now that I took that initial test, but, uh, uh, yeah, well worth it. I, I know for sure I've got confidence you're going to pass. Um, yeah, study those the weather patterns and stuff. And if I remember right, you're also in luck because I think the recurrent stuff drops the weather. It does. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'd suggest, uh, get it on the schedule and that'll kick yourself into gear to actually dive deeper into the study material and get it done. Absolutely. Maybe well, I'll do that tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, before I let you go here, um, I've got a quick lightning round. And by quick, it's 10 questions. Usually these are just quicker answers, but uh, some of these might I'll be tough. You might. Face off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all right. No problem here. As long as the back is holding up, we're good. So, all right. Question number one. And this could be tough. I know you're a big fan, so it might be tough. But uh, who are your top three favorite creators on YouTube? <laughs> city de Jongson, peter lindgren and oh this one's tough because there's so many people that i really really love <sighs> i'm gonna go kyle watts because he's my bro awesome yep i like that answer all right number two who would you want to sponsor your channel if you could only pick one company Ooh, well sony because i'm a sony fanboy Best piece of technology used in 2021. Best technology. It doesn't have to even be camera equipment. It can be oh, anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Yep. Um, even though the a 7 S3 is a pretty amazing piece of technology. I think it's probably one of the best. Yep. I'm going to go. A, I, would, I would say probably the MacBook Pros, but I haven't yet got one. Because I think, I think on it. Well, you know what? I, even though I don't have one, I'm going to say it. The MacBook, the the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chip, those that's got to be the best tech because there hasn't been a computer yet that's been able to handle a lot of these codecs and 10-bit stuff. And finally, we have a computer that can just rip through that stuff and multiple uh, versions of it stack. So I'm, I'm going to say that yeah, the the the, the new Mac. Apple MacBook Pros and processors. I'd be very interested to test those out because at the beginning of the year, I got the new M1 Mac Mini, and that has been phenomenal for me. So uh, I, I can't imagine how much better these new Macs are. But I, mean, I, I hear online I they're amazing. I have a 2019 MacBook Pro, a 15-inch with a Vega 20. And, man, it, it it's great. But if you start putting any 120 frame per second 10 bit in it from the sony it just you can't you have to proxy it or you know uh render it all down to get it to even play somewhat smoothly so i hear the new ones can just rip through it it makes me like man cringe like when i bought this thing i got it refurbished for like two grand a few years ago a, a year and a half ago and uh i'm like man i really want that new i want to i could get 1100 dollars if i trade it into apple right now and uh and like i don't even need the maxed out one i just want the base 14 inch model with uh just up, updated hard drive so i have a little bit more storage space that's it <laughs> yeah i think i would go with the 14 inch model too i feel like uh, is the next bump up is that 16 or is it yeah i mean it's 16 and the only reason why i honestly bought the 15 inch model that i have now is because it was the only one that had the the dedicated graphics and now that there's pretty much the same in both the size i prefer smaller laptops so but the laptop before i had this one i actually had a 13 inch macbook pro and um, i used that thing for years until it finally just couldn't handle anything editing wise and um uh, the battery it, it was so dead the battery would just if i unplugged it it would 
just like last like five minutes and it was done. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love the size of the 13 inch and I think it, I would have liked a little bit bigger screen. And I think that's what the 14 inch provides you know, just, just a little bit bigger screen. And uh, you know, just, I love the portability of it. So yeah, I, I would totally get the 14 inch. Over. See, I, that's actually what I went from is the 2013 13 inch Mac pro to this Mac mini. And so obviously this computer is going to outperform that. And so that's probably why I like it so much, but, uh, but yeah, so I feel your pain on the old 13 inch, uh, Mac pros, because like you said, well, yeah, you basically had to have it plugged in all the time for the battery to keep yeah. working. And, and then I ran into issues while editing, it would just constantly crash and and i couldn't take it anymore and i i knew that i knew that they're working on the new m1s but i was like i literally can't and i think at the time they were about to redo the this is the 15 inch model i knew that the 16 inch was coming out any time but i was like i literally can't wait any longer because i'm this 13 inch mac is killing me so i had to uh to make the upgrade so all right best gift uh gift recommendation for content creation under fifty dollars. Under fifty bucks. Ooh, that's a that's a good one. Everything's really expensive for content creation. It is. And a funny thing was I, I was talking about the we were talking about this with Kyle the other, the other night that we were listening. I think if you're a GoPro dollars. guy, um are you a GoPro guy? Do you have GoPros? I don't, I, I have a, a hero seven, but it's not mine. It's my, I work for, for, for a school and they got okay. like three of them and they never use them. And so I literally pulled it out of the box, like brand new, like a year ago. And that just tells you how they, how long have they been sitting around the school, not being used. And I, I just, I, I just kind of tested it out and use it a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not a huge GoPro guy. I just, I just use the hero seven whenever I need something. Um, I'm going to go with, Shoot, I'm, I'm I'm sure I'm think I'm forgetting about something that, that's like you know you use this like every day, Paul. But um, I'm gonna go with just uh, just a solid SD card, man. Get a good um, like the, the Sandisk Extreme Pros, man. They're they're under fifty bucks. Get a nice 128 gig. Um, it's it's nice to have a big card and not have to worry about running out of space. That's right, not, that's, that's good. Go that's a good recommendation. Um, yeah, I was going to say with the GoPro, I just see they released the Enduro battery. I think that's what they're calling it. And uh, I think it's only for uh, the Hero 9 and 10. But I'm excited about it because it's a battery built for the cold environment. And up in North Dakota, that'll be perfect for up here. And I think it's <laughs> yeah. it's only coming in at like 25 bucks, So uh, wow. not bad. All right. This one's probably tough. I know for my channel, I can uh, pinpoint... Uh, what I don't like on my channel, but what is your least favorite video on your channel? Oh gosh, <laughs> my least favorite video. I don't even think I have a favorite video on my channel. I'm still learning how to do it, get it all right. Um, there, I can't, um, it's gotta be one of the ones I was, I mean, obviously one of the first ones that you, you, I'm, I'm ho I would hope that as you watch my channel, the wor the first one is totally the worst. And as you continue to watch them, they gradually, at least in a small fractions, get better over time. So I'm, I'll just go with my first one. I don't even know what it is, but I, I know that okay. one of my first ones, I just, I did like a sit down talk with one of my buddies about like growing a business with Instagram and his key, it has some good information in it from a business point, but just the audio was terrible. The the video looked kind of trashy because we weren't using any nice lights. So I'll go with that one. Well, that kind of answers my next question too then. Um, I My next question was, what is your favorite video? And maybe you have one or is it just your last video? <laughs> you know what? My favorite video um, was uh, the one I did with Kyle. I thought that was, I, I thought it was, it was, it was fun to make and it was, little a little bit interesting you know it was more of like a vlog style mixed with some shooting and stuff so i i had a real real fun time shooting that one i mean i i have a few good like i i started kind of finding my little like my style of making videos and for product stuff i always like to start it off with like a really catchy b-roll sequence so like i did the like the charging wall video of mine um i kind of started off with this like 
you know, kind of epic music and just a bunch of different shots. I did like this, like, uh, uh, Desview sent me like a, a teleprompter and I, and I, I started it off with like, this, like some catchy, like funky music with so just like a lot of B roll. And I'm, I'm a very, uh, being the mu musician that I am, I like to sync a lot of my clips straight to the music and I can, I find different instruments and beats to sync to. And so I don't know, I, I, I do, I enjoy it, the editing process a lot. But uh, so I, I would say those are those are a lot of my my favorite videos. Just a lot of the B roll stuff, and I don't know. But yeah, I, my I favorite... love the intro to that charging wall video, and and then the actual intro itself was awesome too. So yeah, it was a phenomenal B roll, all to the beat. Everything was very awesome to watch. All right, number seven. If YouTube shut down tomorrow, what would be your platform of choice? Uh, is there another platform for a video? No, shit. Vimeo <laughs> isn't dead. Um, I mean, I would probably just do a lot of Instagram uh, stories and reels, I guess. I, I, I haven't yet gotten a TikTok. Have you gotten a TikTok at all? I have not gotten a TikTok. And what's this I'm seeing on Amazon now? It's like there's a live section on Amazon. Is that a new thing or have I just been missing out? I don't know. That's I mean, this is the first I've heard. Now I'm going to go off it. I I remember yeah, I, hearing something that that you uh, Amazon, like, uh, a lot, like a, a few years ago, uh, copyrighted the word like Amazon Tube or or okay. or Fire Tube or something like that. Like they're kind of they were they were trying to like come out with their own YouTube something so they can see, compete against Google. I don't know. I stumbled across it on. Yeah, I st stumbled across it on Cyber Monday, and it was like, is this just for product reviews, or is this actually a platform that's coming out that's for live streaming? I, I, I know nothing about it, but uh, if you find anything out about that, let me know. All right, uh, number eight, pick one of these options. The first option is you have become the largest YouTuber on the platform based on subscriber count. Uh, second option is you've been given the opportunity to direct and shoot a new version of Back to the Future, and it becomes one of the most watched films in history. Which one would you choose? Ooh. You know what? I would, as much as I would love to be associated with, you know what? No. There's, you can't remake Back to the Future, so that question is immediately, I, nobody needs to remake Back to the Future. It doesn't need to be done, so... That's my final answer on that one. I'm going to go with YouTuber all the way. And and the main reason why as well for that one is because I, I love, I would love the aspect of getting to meet and have more opportunities to create with people doing that than being famous for making another Back to the Future that I'd never want to happen. But yes. Awesome answer. I was thinking that would be a little bit harder for you, but uh, spoken no, like they, a true they, fan, want, you what, can't remake When it. I thought about it, I was like, ooh. That it that does sound tempting, but then I was like, when I, after I thought about it, I'm like, no, I know I do not want. Everybody's like, make it back to the future four. I'm like, no, don't just this. It, it is done. You know, you can't you can't recast. You can't remake it. It is what it is. Uh, the closest you're going to get to Back to the Future Part Four is Back to the Future the musical. <laughs> I'm I'm not joking. You, they have a they made a Back to the Future the musical. It's only over in. Uh, I think it's like over in England right now or something oh, like that. Oh, really? Get brought up in the states. So, have you booked your tickets? Uh, no, but I would. That my wife knows that would be a, a pretty epic one. But she she loves musicals, and that's probably about the only way for me to go into musicals is for me to have watch back. I I'm not a huge musical fan, but <laughs> Back to the Future of the Musical sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, number nine. If you have if you could have one professional athlete on your live show, who would it be? Tim Tebow. Oh, very cool. Yep. I think that would be a very I'm a interesting huge interview. I'm a Florida Gators fan, and uh, I just have a lot of respect for Tim Tebow as a, as a person and uh, the, 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 the leader and mentor he has been and just what, who he stands for and, uh, and just being able to stand, you know, he's been through a lot as a, as a, as a athlete and as a person. And, um, and the way he handles himself in these situations has just shown all the person that he is. And uh, it's, it's really cool to see his, I was really hoping that he would be able to make something of himself in the NFL 
Um, I just I don't think he got he got the, an, enough of a chance to to do that. But I mean, it's it's a hard uh, anyway. It's hard to compete. But I, I that, that that's who I would go with. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. Is that uh, Florida Gators team the best college football team in history? For me, yes, yes, they are. Yep, yeah, uh, they're Florida Gators all the way. Uh, I actually was. I got to go to a lot of the home games when Tim Tebow was on the Gators, so it was uh, that was also a really uh, fun time to experience. One of my friends went to UF, and he uh, frequently got me into the uh, student section of the games, and we got to, I got to see a lot of um, magic moments happen with with that that dude. So it was really cool to be right. Able I'm to see big, a lot of stuff. big Vikings fan, so uh, uh, they had Percy Harvin on that team as well, didn't they? Her, her, that, Percy has no mercy is what I would always, what I, oh, what I always said. He that was such was an awesome a, player. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so it's cool. You got, you got, you got that guy. He was, he was good. Yeah. He was phenomenal. All right. Last question of the night. What is the best advice you could give someone just starting YouTube? Just, I mean, it's everybody always says this and it's, I think Jared I know what's Spink. coming. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to give you the Jared Spink answer. Just start now. But, um, you know, just because you can think about it all day. That's what I did. <clears throat> I thought about it, like, all the time. Like, oh, man, this is really cool. I could do this one day. Oh, man, this video is really cool. I could do this all day. But it, it takes practice to really get, like, you, it looks it looks easier when you watch it. When you watch these, I'm like, this guy's doing that. And then you start doing it yourself, and you realize just how much work goes into it and it's not and and people are like well that guy is just a natural filmmaker or that guy is just natural talking to the camera or that guy is just you know natural being that funny persona it's it you you say that but that guy had to work to get where he was and no matter like how much work it was for him to get to that point, I, I feel like we like, we like to compare ourselves to other people too often. I'm like, man, that guy didn't have to work that hard. Or Peter Lindgren, he had a channel and he 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 he, he grew to 500,000 subscribers in one year. That's not fair. His I could do better stuff than that guy. And maybe you do make better content than Peter Lindgren. I don't know if that's possible, but I mean, <laughs> if if you did, um, it, and, and I'm not growing as fast as he is. Like it's, it's not all equal in the YouTube realm and it's hard to get yourself marketed. You just got to do it and keep doing it. And I don't know, I I'm on the mindset of like, you know, if I can make it one day, that'd be awesome. I'd love to be able to like do what I love and make money from it. But at the same time, I'm not doing YouTube for the money. I mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm a puny 1000 subscriber channel and I, and, and in a lot of the, those ways I deserve it because I haven't yet put in an, enough work to get me to be a bigger subscriber channel yet so i'm working at it and i could probably do better i think each of us could probably do better at anything we're doing but um you got to put that work in and and the only way to do that is to start now and learn the grind and learn how to do all this stuff because it looks a lot easier than it actually is and then at the same time it takes more time for you to invest to get to a certain area than it than this other guy. This other guy might have done the work in three months, and that might take you to do the same amount of work. It's not like you're doing less or more work, but just because of the person you are, the t talents that you have, it takes it takes you longer to do the same amount of work. And at, at the end of the day, it's all the same amount of work. It's just how long does it take you to get there, and everybody's different. So just start now. <laughs> well, I think we're going to finish with that. Great advice. Um... Paul, before you go, uh, tell my listeners where they can uh, see more content from you and maybe connect. Absolutely. Uh, you can always go to paulfeinberg.com. That's P-A-U-L-F-E-I-N-B-E-R-G. I'm sure you have links down somewhere. Uh, .com, that has like a link where it has the top most recent videos I've done. And you can contact me there and get a hold of me there. Also on uh, Twitter at Feinberg dot paul and then uh or sorry feinberg paul and it always throws me off feinberg paul at twitter and then for it for uh instagram it's just paul feinberg and then obviously for youtube just youtube.com forward slash paul feinberg so 
And like you said, we will have those links in the show notes. Uh, I want to thank you again for uh, spending uh, quite a bit of time on this show. I really appreciate it. My back is feeling great. You you must be like the secret medicine right now. Hey, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> Uh, hopefully we can have you on again in the future at some point. Uh, maybe after you get your part 107, uh, we could have a celebration cool. on the channel or something. So yeah. uh, I want to thank Before all my li- back to people. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'd, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I could probably, hopefully I'll have them watched by then. So, Ooh, yes. That, that'll be your task. You have to watch yep. it and I got to pass my part 107. There we go. Sounds like I got an easier part of the deal here. <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit. <laughs> well, I want to thank all my listeners for listening yet again, um, and we will see you next week.